in the German language, right? They have words like schadenfreude, which means pleasure from someone else's misfortune. What is the word for the multiplicative effect of two noobs together? It's how to talk to a I with your hosts, Go to Go and West the Synth Mind. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, children of all ages, dogs, cats, robots, and everybody in between, we are glad you're here with us. Welcome to HTTTA, How to Talk to AI. I am your host, the Synth Mind himself, West Shields, but I am joined by the ever voracious, ever capable wonder herself. Miss Gotta Go, or affectionately as we know, G. How are you, G? Good, thank you. This is a lovely introduction. Hey, you know, I try. So, why are we here? We want to talk to you about prompt engineering. I'm sure, unless you've been living under a rock, you've heard about this little thing called ChatGPT. It's just the scratching the surface with the various different types of neural network backed models that are out there right now being put forth by companies like OpenAI and Google and Microsoft. We're on the cusp of a wave right now that at least G and I think that this is, this is going to be a, a revelatory time in history. And we want to hopefully here in the, uh, the coming weeks and months and years, share with you our journey, our experiences, and our insights into how to talk to these amazing machines and help you get the most out of them, be that some from business insights to, to song lyrics and everything else in between that you can create with these wonderful tools. We'll talk about what prompt engineering is and then a little bit more about what we want this, uh, this podcast here to become. So with that, G, tell us about yourself. How'd you find this little humble, you know, how'd you find a GPT for the first time? And, uh, and, and tell us how you came up in this world. It feels like it's been ages ago. I think I discovered Chat GPT like a few days after it's launching. In AI years, that's six years of normal human time pass in one day in AI verse. So uh, we're we're speaking to you in March of 2023 right now for episode zero. That that was only back in November, am I right? Yeah. So November 30th, Chat GPT launched, and I think. I saw somebody on LinkedIn and the person was definitely not very tech savvy. And I was like, wait a second, if a non-tech savvy person is talking about this, this is something. Obviously, we've been looking into AI and different large language models and image models and all the craziness that was happening with generative AI. But I think with ChatGPT, what was interesting, the way they launched and the whole like marketing and PR campaign that... It was such, so user-driven, very similar as my journey. So, yes, I'm curious to hear your experience, but I tried it and I was like, yep, everything changes, yep. time changes. I'm sold. I still <laughs> remember the first time I put in a prompt that was not much different than something I might dump into a Google search because I had no other context for how to use these things. And then like before your eyes, like just, it's, it still makes me feel like a little excited. It's like witnessing magic it's like the only way i can describe it i have a question to you then you you first time used did you ask did you communicate with chat gpt as it is a person like this human being like machine or a robot like saying hey how do you feel or what's your name or hi i'm god like who are you or did you go with giving instructions? As I'm sure you'll come to find out, and our listeners as well, I am someone who wants to get all the juice out of something like this. So my mind just started working with, oh my gosh, this is way different than anything I've seen before. Let's, what can I use it for? So I started out with some zero shot prompts. That's basically just like a singular question of, of it. That might be a little more advanced than a Google search, but just the specificity of the responses I was so taken aback by. But then soon thereafter, I learned about role prompting, which is where you can actually make the AI model assume a persona of sorts. You get a better result. It's just incredible. If I want it to make me a recipe, I tell it to be a chef first and then ask me to make a specific recipe. And lo and behold, that's a better result than, I, than if I just ask it, 
hey, give me a recipe because it has the context around that. So that was my first kind of delve into it. I think if I look back, some of my first prompts, which is only, I think I only really discovered it in January, but some of my first prompts were trying to use it for like planning a trip and quickly discovered that, oh, this is way better than doing like 40 Google searches all at once. Funny that you say that because I was getting back into YouTube game, the first one I tried to, as I think any YouTuber did for ChatGPT to write YouTube titles. I was like, okay, I can give instructions, make it less than 50 characters, make it catchy. And then I so quickly realized that no, it's the moment you put that YouTube titles, it goes, oh, how to make money, guide, get rich. And I was like, no, 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 no. So no, not clickbait. Yeah. So I was like, wait a second. So this thing should be able to write way better things. This is just me who is not giving proper instructions. And actually, in the very beginning, I made a video about ethics of AI. And looking back, it is still an interesting video. But looking back, I just simply asked, oh, what do you think about ethics of AI? Or what should we do? What is the impact? Now, with the knowledge I have right now, I know that I can completely influence those results. And now I can use jailbreaks and really even get ChatGPT to say some crazy things. Yeah, yeah. Um, it is definitely a bit of a shift from using it to uh, using it compared to a, a depth first search model or a page hit model like Google's algorithm is based on. But I feel like since you and I might be categorized as power users of this kind of tool right now. Let's rewind the tape a little bit and talk about maybe what prompt engineering even is. Uh, from today's Wikipedia entry, prompt engineering is a concept in artificial intelligence, particularly natural language processing. In prompt engineering, the description of the task that the AI is supposed to accomplish is embedded in the input as a question instead of being implicitly given. Prompt engineering typically works by converting one or more tasks into prompt-based data sets and training the language model with what has been called prompt-based learning or just prompt learning. All right. So a lot of fancier terms that allow you've never me. heard before. Yes, please translate. Allow me to translate this as explaining like M5 or any normal human being who is listening to this. Yeah. Prompt engineering is an art and a science in itself of how to talk to AI or to large language models, if you may. And I really like to use some references that it's not what you say, it's how you say it. And I think if you think about it, if you have a conversation with a person and you want this person to do something what you want. So if anybody who managed people, I think, can relate or anybody who had personal assistant or executive assistant, the results you get is based on your instructions you provide. If you give no input, you get very sloppy results. And I experienced this as an architect working with the clients. And yeah. anybody who ever worked with graphical designers would say exactly the same. So coming with this background, this is my interpretation, or you can say generalization of what prompt engineering is. I definitely agree with the art and science cross-section because it would almost seem like just in your example there that if you uh if you said hey i need to communicate some instructions to one of my coworkers or persuade them to do something for example with prompt engineering and and, and using some of these models you might want to say and think about okay what makes an argument persuasive and using the resources just searching on the internet or even asking the ai hey what makes a good persuasive argument and it tells you then using that in the prompt hey i need to convince someone of my position based on this different website entry or this this technique i want you to use the pers persuasive argumentative style and imagine that you're a master communicator and debater so it's just i think it that the perfect cross section of it is where you know you, you, yes, thinking about things maybe a little algorithmically and as little components in an equation is definitely one way that's helpful, but also having a completely outside the box perspective into how things are communicated or how a certain piece of art that if you want to generate something in mid journey, how 
uh, that style gets assembled is a, uh, I think, a really key and important piece. You know what's funny outcome of all, especially text to image, I noticed? What's that? That a lot of people learn more about art and art yeah. styles and artists. And this is like one kind of benefit I noticed that people search actively about different artists in different times. As someone who studied art history back in academia, this is fascinating to see the same names and styles pop up and now more people actually know about it. I think that's quite cool. You pulled Wikipedia, which is cool. It's fine. But I want to see pull ya. learn prompting. Maybe or... I'm just still, I'm still stuck in the past a little bit. <laughs> no, no, Wikipedia, it's a classic, right? But on learnprompting.org, prompt engineering is the process of communicating effectively with an AI to achieve desired results. There you That's go. It. Here you go. And of course, there is way more you can go into and all the yes. details. But I think this one sentence so nicely also wraps it. No, I completely agree. And you probably noticed that G and I may not have the exact same speaking intonation. We're in fact across the world from one another, <laughs> but found each other just through that little discord right there, the learnprompting.org discord. So I'm really glad you brought that up because what I think you'll find, especially with all of the different tools that Facebook and Google, Instagram leverage to put ads that are relevant to us in front of our faces. If you make one Google search for chat GPT, you might start getting advertisements for Jeff's top 3,000 chat GPT prompts. You know, <laughs> what I think is, you know, you don't get Jeff's top 3,000 GPT prompt emails. You uh, mean uh, all these guides? All these guides, mm -hmm. quick reference, quick references and some, hey, you pay me $500 for the how to talk to AI course. Uh, and then you know, uh, in uh, two weeks, you pay me another 200 The previous course check. is outdated, and now there is outdated. a new course. The thing with learnprompting.org, it's open source, which means that it's live. So community and people on GitHub updating all the time. And Wes, I know you published an article there too, right? Yeah. Yep. Our articles and our write-ups in there is based on peer-reviewed research. Now... I don't know about you, G. I can't imagine that the uh, average bear has 100 page academic papers on the latest how to talk to AI techniques and their experiments uh, on their nightstand. And if they do, I'm surely they work to put them right to sleep. But the secret sauce of learned prompting is we will take those and then digest them much like a cow digests grass through the si six or seven stomachs that they have and make it somewhat more digestible somewhat more understandable but then rather than coming out at cow dung in the end oh we're gonna we're gonna take the time and effort and energy to try to make this as broadly understandable as possible because we're both very passionate about this these tools and what prompting can do for you in your life in that same vein what what has coming into prompt engineering kind of done for you and shaped a little bit of what you kind of want to do in the future so just to rewind first time i came across learnprompting.org this thing felt real, like it felt research-backed. And this is what I really wanted to also understand. Not just, hey, this is a cool prompt, use this prompt, that's it. But I wanted to understand how to make these good prompts, right? And this was because I was going through a career shift and I was about to look for a job. And my, my thinking was that, okay, if I'm looking for a new job, I need to get some competitive edge or upscale. And I was learning about AI for like past years, right? And I was like, okay, I'm going to learn this and get involved in the community and contribute. And I think Discord, and I could be, could be wrong, but I think when I joined Discord was like 300, 350 people. Now, yeah. now today in 2023, what we have in March. Over 30,000, I think. Yes. And... It was like this small website that one brilliant person, should we, should we say? Well, we're, well, eventually we'll get Sander on here. We'll tell, we'll have him, the spiritual leader of the, uh, the learn prompting movement. We'll, we'll interview him and, and talk to him yeah. about his motivations. But see, I think that's an interesting approach where you would take, Hey, I'm going to learn everything about this. 
to me, I would go, I'm going to use this to write my cover letters so I don't have to write a thousand cover letters as I apply for jobs. Whole topic, I have personal opinion about writing cover letters or resumes or using your personal data and dumping it in yeah. these type of tools. We can definitely explore that. Yeah. But yeah, so learn prompting. I got involved with the community, started talking tenders and became contributor. And then I decided to make YouTube videos where I just share what I learn and what I'm doing. So just basically get people on my on a journey. And yeah, the rest is a history. My channel started getting a couple of views. And then we started talking and just basically everything became crazy. Now I'm scrapping time to keep learning, to keep updating yeah. myself and also yes. creating and I'm glad that we are doing this because I'm receiving so many questions from people just not scalable for me to answer it all plus putting two minds and getting some guests on this channel who are deep into these things as well I think is going to be a fantastic medium getting their perspectives just wonderfully beneficial but let that not be a barrier you don't need to be a computer science expert or have some sort of certification in natural language modeling or some fancy degree. It, you need, to, from where I sit, you need two different things to be a prompt engineer and use these tools really well, even to the point where you can make a career or make some money from them. You need to have maybe probably done a Google search or sent a text message or written an email because you will be writing into a little box on the internet that is going to send it to a large language model and give you a response back. And then two, you need to just be a person that's alive maybe and have had some different experiences, insights, and viewpoints in the world. It's really just everyone's differences that they can bring forth into a process like prompt engineering that can give them a bit of a competitive edge. If you've been well-traveled or well-read, or just have a certain kind of jeu de vivre that can blade into some really interesting and creative results thanks to prompt engineering. Funny thing, I don't know if you watched my video about Midjourney, but Midjourney's founder, he basically shared the interesting insight that when we'd been doing user research, uh, and I'm here is specifically Midjourney, so this was before ChatGPT, that what we found out that people who are older that older people, they communicate way better what they want. They have, yeah. we have experiences, exactly what you were saying. They have experiences, they lived life, they have seen stuff and experienced stuff. So they can actually put words to it, just statistically probably read more books yeah. than a younger person. So this is was interesting that as a, for prompt engineering, that actually your age, you have an advantage over a younger person. Definitely, definitely. That's just another data point in how this isn't a, a young tech savvy tool that you need to really be on the cutting edge to use. It's going to really form a lot. It's going to transform anything and everybody has something to bring to the table. So Wes, so I found Learn Prompting. How did you found it? And also what got you to this point? Like, where is the interest coming from and how are you using all this knowledge and your involvement with Learn Prompting? And in general, I heard that you're one of the top sellers on prompt base, right? Well, you know, I'm up there, but I think <laughs> I'm, I'm flirting around top 200 in the world. But that's, that's just one little opportunity that people can take advantage of right now. You can put your compelling prompt that gives you a travel itinerary or something that produces a photo realistic model in, in mid journey. You can put those online on this website, promptbase.com. We'll put that in the description as well, that you can sell between two and $20, two and $30 or all, even offer custom prompts. It's a great little way to make some passive income. Uh, if you look at some of the top sellers on there right now, uh, they're on pace to make 80 to a hundred thousand dollars in passive income in selling 2.99, 3.99, 4.99 prompts. Like this you is know, amazing. Not, not too expensive, but definitely speaks to the interest. This isn't just something that you know, select group of people are going to be interested in. It's going to touch every aspect of everyone's life in some way. But you asked, you know, how I got into this. So I just finished a degree 
into operations research. So I got initially exposed to some machine learning principles and a lot of the a lot of the building blocks that go into making these large language models. I was definitely in over my head in those classes, but I recognized that, hey, this is a this is kind of like the key to the future. Um, I'm going to try real hard to understand it a little bit and then take it from there. But graduated, came and went on about my regular job, regular life, and then ChatGPT came out. And, and immediately, like I said, as soon as I put that first prompt in there, I'm like, this is way different. It, I can only, the only... Way I can describe it is, is like it must have been what it was like for someone to see an airplane flying in the sky for the first time, like back in the 1910s or something like that. Or Google. Or Google search. Yeah. It's it was that transformative to me. And I immediately just started started using it, but I didn't have the context beyond what we call zero shot prompting now that I know, but essentially the same kind of questions I would throw into a Google search. That's when I found learn prompting, saw that it was open source. And I'm like, oh, I, I just finished two and a half years of reading papers just like this. I can maybe contribute something here. So that's what I did. And during that journey, and this is the thing that if I never talk about this or never do anything else with, with prompting and prompt engineering and talking to AI, why it's so special and important to me. When you have a tool that can get you 75% of the way on anything, on writing an email, on coming up with new and fresh ideas for your next YouTube video title on what you should eat for dinner tonight, on where you should go during your trip, you know, trip to Europe. When you have something that you know is going to get you 75% of the way there, at least for me, who's someone that is, is kind of constantly thinking about how he's going to communicate, how he's going to express himself, that email I got to write to my boss the next day. With that gone, it frees up so much just like emotional and intellectual like space in my life that's allowed me to be more present with my family and engaging with other people. So while I can't say that's going to be everyone's reaction and response and experience when they do this, it was for me. And that's what, and it's only just the beginning with so many of these things. So that's how I came into it and why I know it's going to continue to be a big part of our, my life and my journey. This is so, amazing. Yeah. Thank you for sharing this. No, absolutely. Because it can be anybody. Everybody has something to offer in prop engineering. If you're a good communicator in written, auditory, in any you have yeah. something to offer. I think with that, you know, we want this to become something great, something informative, something funny. I don't know about you. Every time I click on a new AI video, I feel like it's all gloom and doom or way <laughs> above my head. Has that been your experience? Not with my videos. I know that's why I <laughs> like it, and that's why we're together. Dude. Yes, no. Uh, th this this was actually my annoyance. You can say that for almost like a year, of space on YouTube about AI turned into this get rich quick. Use Chat GPT. You are superhuman yeah. AI. I was like, wait, wait, guys and girls, where is critical thinking? Where is rational thinking? This yeah. is like life moves on and. For me, this danger of sensationalism of AI, because for most people who don't know what it is and they just hear something like that, that either scares them or it makes them feel that this is a fraud. And that's yeah. why I think having these conversations and having this podcast allows A, for us to have different perspectives that we come from different backgrounds and share more in-depth views. would wish this podcast to be relevant because even researchers ai researcher doesn't mean is a good prompt engineer i really like mm -hmm. what sam altman said but he's not a good prompt engineer creates and is the ceo of these tools exactly because going to this like you you're doing your own research learning about prompts testing experimenting seeing what works yeah. what not like down to the word and i think it's an important point you brought up right there where it's just hey no one is an expert in this right now. This is a term that's been used for six months. There are no objective measures of prompt engineers. Exactly. So please, now don't think for a second that you're going to have all this wisdom and insight by spending one ninety nine ninety nine on Jeff's top three thousand prompts, because I'm dollars to donuts would bet that he probably used Chat GPT to create most of those. But I, but I recognize, though, that, hey, some people may not want to become 
really deeply involved prompt engineers, but recognize that there's a lot of value to be gained. We can at least hopefully during these podcasts offer some insights into how to find people that know how to talk to AI and leverage it well, or what questions you should be asking of, of your, your peers, your employees, of the AI itself to get to a, a point where you can get it to, to do what you want from it. This is a really good point because that internet and especially social media, right? Everyone heard that marketing, digital marketing, if you want your products to be, be sold, you need to be an influencer and stuff like that. Mind you, not everybody needs to be a marketing expert. That's why yeah. there are a specific group of people who can who will go in depth of how algorithms work, how to position your product. And it should be like that. I was always also saying to my artist friends who worry about business side, get a business partner. Your job yeah. is to be an artist. The moment artist cares and worries about how to earn money, that changes the game. So yeah. I think it's exactly the same that just because there is this tools and AI tools, not everybody needs to become an expert. If you want to, you definitely can go that path. But a lot of people, it just as using any other assistance, they will use prompt engineering consultants, they will be buying prompts. It's just how it has always been. Not everybody becomes an expert. Yeah, and I think it uh, it can be used too as not a strictly generative tool. Hey, I need you to write this email for me. I need you to work on this report for me. Plenty of ethics to unpack with that one, as I'm sure this is going to become a huge topic of discussion if it's not already on, on every high school and college campus, considering the essay is now in jeopardy. It is. That's not to say that it should be something that should be shunned. We gave every student a calculator however many years ago, and we didn't then stop doing math, we just changed how we evaluated them. The same can be said for prompt engineering. I think it's a great exercise to go, yeah, use this tool, but then you're going to put your prompt at the top of the uh, essay. And I want you to come back and tell me about how that worked out for you. I'm still going to grade it like I would any old essay. And that in, in itself becomes a really good critical thinking exercise. Talking about critical thinking, one use case, which is what you shared that for you, it's freeing 75% of time and removing this just basically stress and anxiety when you have to write emails, when you have to basically overthinking. The way I look at it is like, literally, I have a personal assistant who can be honest. Again, going back to my roots in academia and with architecture, you want to have a professor. The best professor is who never compliments your work. You bring 100 ideas and he will tell how every of those ideas could be better or, or what you can improve. So for me, I notice that most of the times when I use ChatGPT for ideation or brainstorming or writing, I use it to criticize me, yeah. the, the criticize mode, which I made a video about. But I use it in so many instances to basically challenge my own bias or my own thinking what i think is good yeah and that allows me push boundaries and then i can again run that the same thing and push even more and even more that's it's almost just like a little a stepping stone to help you get to the next level and i think it can be that for a lot of people i'm sure i'm sure you've heard and it's definitely a point like Hey, this is the, this could be the end of creativity and, and content, creative thinking as we know it. I disagree. I think it's just going to, this is going to take our creativity to heights we could never achieve um, because the stress of looking at a blank page or a, an empty canvas, it isn't there anymore. Like it, it, it's okay. I know I have at least a jumping off point and I can get something and have it do that output again. And if I don't like it, or I could just say, all right, I can work with this. Let me just make some changes and go on to something that you never even would have even considered. Okay, so what can people expect from us? Well, we hope to offer two perspectives, hopefully unique ones in the sense that uh, G and I just try to hold on as tight as we can to the breakneck pace of all things AI and prompt engineering that gets thrown at us. So we can offer that perspective in the sense that we're a little more in the center of it. It's all I seem to think about these days. So. 
we're going to offer those two perspectives that you can count on. We hope to bring some interesting people in the AI and prompt engineering world to bear. Everything from people that are researching and building and trying to push these models even more into the future and removing biases and refining them and making them better tools to people that are just using prompts in a very interesting way. That is another thing we hope to offer you guys. And to add on that, another aspect is that we would like to make this podcast accessible both to prompt engineers or aspiring people to go and explore deeper that field, but also business owners, everyday people who want to understand this and want to understand AI space, but also where prompt engineers, where these people play a role in their business going forward. Yeah. So I I received a lot of messages, especially from like business owners, entrepreneurs, agency managers. They understand that this is coming. They understand that this is important. But the question is like, how do you actually use it? How do you implement it in everyday business? How yeah. do you place this prompt engineer in your small agency and what this person actually does? So there is so much to explore from both perspectives. And bringing on this podcast both prompt engineers and matching them together with people who could use such service in their day-to-day -day operations and having those two groups of people explore ideas and have conversations, I think that would be really cool. And therefore, I think publishing this video on YouTube is going to be cool to see comments. But we're going to have some fun with this too. Like... Maybe we'll interview someone that's passed away hundreds of years ago with the help of ChatGPT and some of these text-to-voice tools that are coming online. A lot of our talk <laughs> is going to focus around ChatGPT, MidJourney, a lot of these generative AI models, but we'll share some other tools and use cases, both in the sense of different websites that you can check out, take advantage of, or different things that'll make you a better prompt engineer, better user of these tools. So basically... Watch out for the third co-host with quite synthetic voice. There you go. There may be, maybe some may feel uh, we'll be out of a job like that. I say, nay, it'll just make us better at what we do. So with that, folks, for G across the way there, go to go herself across the ocean west, the synth mine. We're going to say ciao and bye for now. Happy uh, prompting, everybody. Happy <laughs> prompting, everybody. Take care. Ciao, ciao.